Thank you for tuning in to today's Back to the City. I'm Simon Calder, and today I'm joined by Martin Devaney. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. You're about to release your seventh record, your first in five years. So right. Exploring the, the one sheet for this record, the phrase that struck me most was that this is a record which is embracing a life that's in the midst of settling down, but certainly not settling. What is the difference between settling down and settling, and how does this record kind of navigate that, that difference? Um, well, that wasn't my phrase. Yeah, I it's don't a good phrase, though. I don't, yeah, I don't disagree <laughs> with it. Yeah. Um, well, just getting a little further on, you know, um, having done this for a long time, and um, but still, you know, kind of accepting the, the realities of, you know, your everyday day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. and, um, and the challenges with that. But also, you know, every morning I still wake up excited about doing this. This and, music? Yes. Yes. And, you know, um, That's good. trying to find the next song and book the next good show. And, yeah. Um, so, uh, kind of moving into a different stage of life in some ways, but not uh, at all losing the, the drive to be be going at it. There's a lot of joy in the record, I think, okay. and like and conscious awareness of that joy. So, like in in songs like "Let Your Hair Down," there's an opening lyric regarding looking for a remedy, and then if you're searching for a melody, I hope you like what you find. Sure. What role does this search for a melody play in the broader context of kind of settling and and this kind of discovery of of joy that seems to be happening. Well, I mean, I think it's interesting that that's, that's what you've taken away from it. Mm. Um, what the, mm. But but great. Um, you know, I think it's somewhat that um, a lot of times you get you get a little bit older, you get married, maybe have kids, whatever it is. You're tired from your day job, and sometimes um, for a lot of us that can be you know can start to lose your inspiration. And, mm. um, so I settling just, down can, does sometimes lead to settling and with not being as artistic, for example. It I, think it, I think it happens. I think it happens. Yeah. Think it happens. Um, and, you know, that's just the reality of life for, for, for folks. And I'm just always energized when, when you do stumble upon something or yeah. um, you do get inspired. And I'm happy to know that it still happens. So to let your hair then, you were telling me that the chorus hook you've had for at least a decade. Yeah, the, the guitar riff and, and the, the chorus basically have been yeah. kind of lingering in different notebooks over the years. And um, these, as, these very notebooks. Uh, those, those very notebooks. Yeah. There's probably some version of it in, in at least three of those dating back about a decade or so. And, um, finally, with the group of guys they are playing with and just um, digging that back out, I was able to finish something I liked. And, yeah. Uh, I think we got it. So it was always going to be let your hair down. Yeah. You had that lyric for the chorus. Yeah. So how did the rest of the song form? I think we just started playing around with it and I would just sing dummy lyrics over uh, mm -hmm. over the music and, and the, you know, the guys I was playing with, we kind of arranged it. And um, well, frankly, we needed a new set ender. You know, mm. we needed a good song to end some sets on because some of the ones we've been playing for years, you know, start to get a little tired. and. Um, so I just kind of put myself in like a Black Crows mindset, like let me see if I can write like a Stonesy mm -hmm. Black Crows song to this riff I've had forever and um, so... And then we, you did uh, it. We did it, yeah. <laughs> that would happen. It became as it, as it does sometimes. Yeah. So speaking of the people that you uh, are playing with, uh, this is quite a collaborative record. Yeah, I mean, you know, I brought in the songs and, and um, we arranged them and, and, and Ryan Plowacki Played a lot of guitars on there, mm -hmm. and, and um, took it home and played with it. And uh, yeah, that's what I wanted. I wanted this to be more of a studio record and, and more of a band record. Mm. And I haven't done a proper rock and roll record in a little while, so you have uh, Sean McPherson on bass. He's on much of it, yeah. But yeah, with high respect. That's right. Yeah, Benny Sachs in high respect. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So when we were still in high school, that band started. Nice. Uh, senior, my senior year of high school, that band started. Yeah. And I played for a few years and. Sean's been in my band on and off for, you know, almost 20 years. Yeah. So he, he's on much of the record, yeah. I think that the manner in which one's relation with others is explored on this record is particularly interesting. Mm. So it's nice that it's a more collaborative record, I think. Yeah. Do you agree? Um, do you think that there's a 
significance to it being more collaborative? And what is your sense of the manner in which you're exploring human relations? Hmm. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I think so. I mean, there's, I tried to, I tried to dig a little deeper with some of that, yeah. you know, like the first song, I had 10 verses for that song. Wow. When you were young, at least, you know, just had to pare it down to figure out what, what I was really getting at. And um, I don't know, I mean, I think I'm coming at it from a different perspective, just being at a different place in my life, hmm. you know, than I was five years ago when the last record came out, which that record was delayed, it should have come out six years ago, probably, <laughs> but it came out five. and and. Just a lot of things happened over the last, you know, five years, and and um, yeah, something like having Sean on the record, you know, deepens it because we've we've been such close friends for so long. So there's been a lot of change in your life, but it's nice that there's that continuity with Sean, who you were playing with back in school. Yeah, yep, and you know the other guys, you know, I've known for a long time, and um, for most of the rest of them, it's their first time. First time I've recorded with them, but um, yeah, with Sean, there's a thread there. Yeah. It's nice that um, you were just emphasizing how much change has happened, and the opening lyric of the final version, not 10 verses, <laughs> of uh, when you were young. Thank God. <laughs> uh, the opening is, would you make a change if you had the chance? So the answer is, yes. Um, yes, you have made some changes. Um, could you take the reins of your circumstance? So that's interesting, the way that the song is ruminating and inviting rumination on the capacity, one's capacity to, to change and to take the reins. I think once we had most of the songs done, that was always going to be track one. Mm. So Why is that? I think it just introduces it well enough, um, maybe the thread that you're, you're speaking to, but... Um, I thought it was a nice way to introduce the, the set of tunes and kind of start whatever narrative might be there. Yeah. yeah. So I like that this story, if, you know, if there's a narrative, I like that this story begins with an individual, perhaps you, kind of deciding to take the reins. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of a, a choice that this individual's making. But then a, it seems like a lot of the change that's happened has had to do with coming into relation with others and, and being inspired to change by others. So, it, do, would you agree? I would agree, sure. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, in, like in, the, in songs like Give Me Hope, so if we take the beginning of this story, deciding to take the reins, mm -hmm. and then in Give Me Hope, you give me hope, I hope it never leaves. There's this interesting awareness there right at the end of the story of interdependence, of this positive interdependence. Is it significant that those are kind of the bookends with this focus at the beginning on taking the reins and this focus at the end on hoping this thing that facilitates change I sticking around? I think it worked out that way. Yeah. Um, I don't know how intentional it was. But, yeah. You know, kind of wanted to go out on as high a note as possible. Yeah. Um, which is not always the case. The last song was the last song I wrote for the record. Mm. So it's the newest, um, whereas the uh, the seed for the first song on the record came from quite a while ago and needed to be pared down to you know, be the introduction for this. I like the seed metaphor because you give me hope, you plant the seed, uh -huh. um, happens in, in the chorus. Uh, so although it's the newest and the final song, it's referring to like a, a new beginning, like a new seed being planted. I think that's, yeah, I mean, like I said, if there's a narrative and you can follow it, I think that's the logical end or, or, you know, transition to whatever's next. Yeah. What story is that, or is Give Me Hope at the beginning of, would you say? I think kind of entering this phase of life, you know, like, mm -hmm. and kind of coming out of these, coming out of the, you know, last several years and into a new and better place mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of things. And, uh, and you know, there's an element of self-doubt there. Um, like you said, you know, you hope that it stays this way. Yeah. And, well, so that and not... I, maybe the next question is how, how to make that happen. Right. Yeah. So the I'd first say... track of the next record. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I like it. Right it's here. We just started it. An evolving story. Um, it's, yeah, doubt, but not pure. To me, it seems like not purely self-doubt. There's just an awareness of there's this beautiful, miraculous stuff happening. It's not entirely in one's control. 
Right. You know, what, it's not just a case of, well, take the reins and then you'll get this beautiful ending to the story. There's a lot of happenstance and things are fragile, like these beautiful relations are fragile. Well, so, and when you, when you put your faith in somebody else to reach the point in life you want to be, you know, it's, yeah. it's not just you anymore. Absolutely. And um, so that, that there's a sense of um, giving yourself over in, to some degree. Yeah. Belief and, and faith, uh, faith in others and humanity mm -hmm. and oneself. Belief comes up interestingly in both of these songs, in the first and the last mm. song. So, you give me hope, something to believe. You give me something to believe. Uh, and then in the first song, the question is, uh, when you were young, did you believe that by now you'd paint your masterpiece? So, right. what's, what do you think those two lyrics about belief suggest about the trajectory of the record? Well, I think, um, you know, the first tune, it's certainly acknowledging we're further a bit down the road. Mm -hmm. And um, what do you do with that, you know? And it, is it, you know, is it that search for the next tune? Is it, is it giving yourself up to another person? Mm. Um, and again, you know, it kind of just worked out nicely. It's not terribly intentional that mm -hmm. those two would be connected that way, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the I think that's part of why this is the opening song too, is it's that acknowledgement of like, all right, here we are, here's a set of circumstances. Mm. Not necessarily where I thought I'd be, um, but you know, what, what do you do in the face of that? Yeah, whatever these circumstances are, you can take the reins of them, and then that will maximize the chance, yeah. perhaps, of something good, new, and unanticipated well, it's happening. It's a lot of work to get to that last song. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, so. yeah. We do create these stories about ourselves and about others. And so it's like this opening track is encouraging a person to remember their roots, mm -hmm. to think about their story so far. And then in both getting cold and holding patterns, there's more reflection on this capacity and tendency that we have to tell stories. So in getting cold, there's two sides to the story being told. And in holding patterns, uh, I, want, I won't sing the same old song, the story of how to right the wrong, these wrongs. Mm -hmm. So, what are you, what is the, as the record develops, mm -hmm. uh, what is it suggesting about this tendency that we have to create stories? You can lose sight of, of uh, your true self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that... Um, whether that's who you're surrounding yourself with or maybe going through a tough time. Um, trying to remember who it is you're trying to be. And um, mm. there's a certain sense of having to be humbled for that at times. Mm, absolutely. Um, which I can speak from experience. It happens a lot, you know, and, um, and just trying to, uh, so to speak, take the reins on, on becoming, you know, the person that you know you have the potential to be yeah um, and trying to recognize how how to go about that it strikes me as interesting that one way in which we can fail to become that person is to forget where we're from mm -hmm. and to not try to forge a coherent narrative that you know relates to the past um, to a pre-existing story but another way is to get wrapped up in a certain story Mm -hmm. that you think is like the true story. That, right. that could be the very thing that impedes uh, the discovery of the, of the, of the true self. Sure. As seems to be happening in holding patterns or, or as holding patterns seems to be the record of deciding to not allow it to happen. Right. Would you say? Well, so, I mean, I think there's a certain acceptance um, that can happen, whether it's um, born out of apathy or, or just um, resignation that this is your lot in life and mm. that's how it's going to be. And it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Um, and I think that, um, like with the first tune with When You Were Young, it's almost like a letter to someone and to oneself that mm -hmm. like, you know, there's, um, may have gone off the track a little, mm. but you know, what happens when you try to regain that drive to be the be all that you can be you know yeah. it's um i like that there's this 
Um, returning to one's younger self and to the belief of one's younger self and the hope that one's younger self had for the future yeah. and think, can I, I don't want to disappoint that younger self. Right. Um, but then by the end, there's a, not a rediscovery of that belief, but a discovery, you give me something to believe. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting, this oscillation between returning to the beginning of the story and the hope that there is at the beginning of the story and thinking this, these final chapters or these middle chapters or wherever we are mm. need, to be, need to live up to the hope of the beginning and then suddenly realizing, oh, I'm actually in a different type of song now or a different type of story. Mm -hmm. um, how does the record kind of navigate between those two things? Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of mystery in those in-betweens. Yeah. Because I'm certainly not the person I thought I was going to be 20 years ago. I right. Think few of us are. Yes. And how do you live up to that? And you know, there's nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can change. But you can learn to not necessarily accept, like I said, not be resigned to your certain lot in life, but to you know, kind of embrace it as like, this is not where I thought I would be. But here are the things that are good about it. Yeah, this is um, where I am, and this is what I'm going to make of it. And here's the things I've messed up. Here's the the you know the peaks and valleys along the way. Yeah. I hope that's kind of what's coming out of this. Yeah. That's, that's what I was maybe trying to get at once we dug into it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this, the songs definitely very clearly testify to that kind of thing happening. Mm. There's a, a strong sense of that kind of thing happening mm -hmm. like, embodied in the songs. Uh, Holding Patterns is the opening track of Side B. And so it, with that in mind, it's all the more interesting that it's declaring I won't sing the same old song. Mm. So what type of song is Holding Patterns and how is it different from old songs? Um, it came together quickly. Yeah. Um, I think it's just trying to acknowledge um, some of those things I was just talking about, you know, the, mm -hmm. there, you know that there have been some rocky waters and there are going to be some. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, I'm gonna let you down. I'm mm -hmm. gonna make you mad. Yeah. But I'm gonna try to not give the same old excuses. Um, yeah. I think something where break the patterns, change the patterns. Yeah, and it's um, and sometimes you feel stuck in in that where um, you know I've gone st through tough paths where it's you know that this is how it is, this is how it's gonna be, and 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 trying to figure out a way out of that. Um, and so I think in it, it's kind of saying like, I, I'm going to screw up again, but I'm not a screw up. Yeah, you exactly. Know? You're a human being yeah. who is therefore inevitably going to screw up again right. or not get everything right, misread yeah. something. But I'm going to try to make this right. And, and I'll probably yeah. take you on the Roman holiday that you deserve <laughs> <laughs> by the end of it. Well, this little inside wink, yeah. Yeah, that will be uh, the end of the next record. Right, yeah. maybe. So there's a reference to keeping the cold at bay in holding patterns, uh, which again is in, segs nicely to getting cold. Mm. Is keeping the cold at bay in the same area as grabbing the reins of one life, or is something a little bit different happening with that idea? And how does it relate to the to a context within which it's getting cold? Um, well, there's a lot more doubt involved mm. there, um, knowing that you know, like if you have certain tendencies with your mood or your, yeah. your um, actions. Yeah. Um, it's always there. And learning to, you know, keep it at bay is, uh, you know, an effort sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a reason why getting cold comes earlier on the record than that line on hol holding patterns. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, one is being in it, the other is recognizing that it's there. Right. And, yeah. and, and wanting to kind of learn how to get through this. Yeah, working yeah. with it, not denying it, but yeah. keeping it at bay. You're not, you're not just, you're not settling with the cold. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, something else that strikes me about getting cold is that it's almost, it, that relates really interestingly, I think, with Give Me Hope, because there is a person in getting cold that has given one hope of a change in life and then I think this is one of my favorite songs on the record because it's dealing with the difficulty of when for whatever reason that isn't manifesting mm -hmm. so it begins I want your life she said and then 
later on, please be to me, the, an address back to this person, please be to me who you said that you'd be, there's a new story beginning to unfold. Yeah, there's, a, there's an arc there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that I think, this is one of the most nuanced songs here and I like that this comes near the beginning of the record mm. because it's almost as if um, there's this acknowledgement that we're very lucky to get the happy ending that we get mm. on the record with it would give me hope because there are these moments there are these red herrings in life too where one can get really excited about this hopeful new thing mm -hmm. I think that makes this a much richer story if the record is a narrative with the trajectory, I think it makes it a much richer story that there's this acknowledgement of uh, stories that one was invested in and that one was maybe holding the reins of, like wanting For a this, while. Yeah, wanting this story <laughs> to happen, but you know, no amount of holding the reins mm -hmm. can make an interpersonal right. narrative right. go the way that you like it to. Right. How did you go about putting that truth into this song? Um, it was really automatic. I mean, mm. uh, everything there, um, the, the story was there. I just had to get it down. Yeah. And, um, so it started, um, it need, well, it needed to fit the music because there's a lot more chords in that song than I normally play. Mm. Um, was that coincidence? It, or? No, it just happened. Well, I yeah. mean, maybe, yeah. It's just... Um, there's a lot of nuance in the song and there's a lot of nuance the in the movement that, Yeah, there's a movement that needed to happen. Yeah. And, um, but, yeah, I mean, I think in there it, it took the course that it had to take in, you know, the least amount of time. Mm. So I wanted to get it kind of be concise about mm -hmm. it. Um, but yes, there's definitely an acknowledgement there that um, things are not always what you thought they were. Yeah. And that there is perspective at the end, hopefully, you know. There's references to beginnings and dead ends yeah. in the song, but yeah. then uh, a new story beginning to unfold. This unfolding of a new story, which seems to be a recurring theme in the mm -hmm. record, um, how does that relate to acknowledgement of and making peace with the what turns out to be a dead end. Well, I mean, I think that song may be best now thinking about it in this context, talking with you. It may, yeah. The song itself may sum up the record, you know, story arc the best in one, yeah. you know, period. A lot goes but, on in this story, in this but, one song. I mean, it's in the acknowledgement too, the whole thing of, you know, the full line is um, uh, beginnings and dead ends, I've been both. Mm, I've been both. And then yeah. I just want to make amends. Mm. It's that acknowledgement of um, being at the end of something and being someone's end or, you know, sharing that. Um, but the hope and acknowledgement that there is a beginning and that um, you can also be there for someone as well. Yeah. So there are these songs which are the product of and invitations to a lot of like rumination. But then there are songs that are just purely, joyfully celebrating a present moment. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you about my girl, sure. know, for example. Mm -hmm. The type of telling about the girl is like, is mostly just like, let me share what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. is, that the, is that the case? Well, if you, I mean, see, now you have me thinking about things I haven't <laughs> even thought about. Um, there's something in that. I mean, that's, it's a song of excitement. Yeah, um, exactly. It's, it's really, in, in it, you know, the narrator never really gets you around to telling much about her. <laughs> just, just yapping about what's going on. <laughs> about how much he wants to tell us. And then, you know, by that point, when I realized that, I was like, but the, I can't, the song can't be any longer. We need, you know, we need to end it here, so. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that is, that moment that you're sort of hoping still exists for yourself. Mm. In the times when it's not. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, so celebrating and trying to keep alive this appreciation of the present moment and also that the present moment that is being appreciated. Mm -hmm. What does it take to have something like that last as long as possible? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, it's like knowing that it is possible. And, yeah. And, and even if... It happens. You to don't you. think It so. happens to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, 
it's good to remind the self that isn't currently that isn't experiencing that at any given moment right for like the self that is to like put it on a record yeah <laughs> yep. like this was me this see is that me. that does happen yeah <laughs> exactly yeah each verse is a little window into a different moment of the history actually mm -hmm. though, of the relationship so we get the first the first meeting when we see the face from afar at a neighborhood northeast bar there is actually very briefly very succinctly this like forging of a narrative that even relates back to itself mm -hmm. in very very few words yeah so is that something important that the song is doing this like this combination of in the chorus let me you know just the celebration of excitement and then in the verses these this was a significant moment in the evolution of the relationship but this was a moment of doubt where i thought maybe i shouldn't communicate how i feel mm -hmm. this is what happens despite having felt that doubt. Mm -hmm. yeah. so what's the significance of all of that but working its way into this very succinct song well i mean truthfully it's and i don't do it very often but it's a very literal song about how i met my, my wife yeah yeah and um so there wasn't need to go into any too great detail because then it would have been too specific. Sure. And I wanted the song to have more appeal than... That other people can relate to Correct. it. And their wives and um, their husbands and their boyfriends and girlfriends. Correct. Yeah. But there's a couple of sly nods in there. And um, I think just musically it's the, you know, syllable count suggested that. I wanted it to be kind of a concise, you know, soulful, musical, you know, three minute mm. burst of, you know, this, yeah, quick story but that sums up the three stages maybe of that particular situation yeah if in about my girl the in the second verse there's this consideration of well maybe i just shouldn't i should just keep it to myself and then presumably that's not what happens right yeah um in in the song drone that seems to be a longer rumination again on moments where one does keep it to oneself or maybe one discovers that actually the right thing to do is to keep something to oneself. Mm. There's uh, keeping a private poem, taking on a tone, a tone which could become, you know, a public tone, but it's evolved alone for mm. sure. Um, and nothing remains but the drone. So my sense, again, is that it's exploring times when there's a need to not communicate. There's a need mm. to keep something private. Mm -hmm. um, is that the case? And how does it relate to the like the alternative embrace of life and uh, focus on connecting and communicating that's happening in some mm. of the other songs? Well, I don't. I mean, it was a subconscious thing, um, but it's definitely that moment when you are feeling stuck. Yeah. And um, so, sort of the. The person in that song is the one that needs to hear about the good times, you know? Yes. Um, yeah. Because they're um, kind of retreating into themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it came quickly. That one didn't have a lot of um, purpose to it. Hmm. But it, it just um, came out that way. Yeah, the lyric that, strike that most interests me is your thoughts to keep a private poem. And so on the one hand, you know, one reading of this could be, oh, this person needs to be reminded of the joy in life and um, get out of the house and uh, but on the other hand it seems like there's something virtuous about the decision to keep a private poem as opposed mm. to to put whatever this person is feeling into like a public song mm. um, is that the case is there mm. like a recognition of there being moments when keeping oneself to oneself is is good absolutely I mean, yeah there's nothing wrong with being alone and yeah and there's solace in that and i think that um sometimes you need to go through that yeah it seems like the person in private right by virtue of writing this private poem they're doing some work on themselves mm. uh which could actually so even drone could be part of the process of getting to give me hope mm -hmm. Well, writing itself is a solitary effort. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, even when you're ultimately doing it for public consumption. I mean, yeah. It's a lot of, I, I trashed a lot of songs, you know, along the right. way. Yeah, and, and there they are, and that's, the, well, poking out the trash There you can. go, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, I mean, there's a lot to sift through to, yeah. find, to find the good stuff. And, yeah. and um, so that's born out of that process, I guess. 
It seems, so Mistakes Were Made is another song that was sifted through mm -hmm. and another, and actually Mistakes Were Made and One Condition mm -hmm. were both songs, old songs from these notebooks yep. that were sifted Everybody through is. and adapted mm -hmm. for this context. Mm -hmm. Mistakes were made, I, I like the emphasis on past tense, like best plans were laid, a double take, mistakes were made, the debt's been paid, seems like a really important shift mm -hmm. in the song. So I was making these mistakes, yes. I was making plans, they might have been based on false hope or have led to dead ends, but but the debt has been paid. Mm -hmm. Was that a new lyric? And, um, and do you think that that's an important shift in the song? Yeah, that was plugged in. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of a sister song with Getting Cold in a way, mm -hmm. um, in that it is past tense. Yeah. Um, Mistakes were made, getting called, and one condition are all back to back in the middle of side A. Yeah, they belong together. Yeah. Um, and they're about people not belonging together. <laughs> in that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that was, um, yeah, the skeleton of that song's been around a while, mm. and, and, and some of the lyrics, um, and I dug it out of a, one of the notebooks and, yeah. and uh, kind of put some new ideas into it and uh, musically it came together when we started kind of playing it with the band hmm. and figured out you know what should go where but it's pretty pretty straightforward as far as uh, compared to some of the other ones the, there is the focus on taking the reins again though definitely I think mm -hmm. like looking back at a few past chapters oh I can see now from my present vantage point that I could have done some things differently but yeah. But and I've paid for that, but now I'm going to not repeat that. It's not defeatist. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. Seems um, to be a, on its way to holding patterns, on its way to being like, okay, that's a pattern that's not going to exist. Yeah, that's, I mean... And again, talking to you in this context, it kind of... Um, I do think about it, you know, in hindsight now, because I don't have to listen to this anymore. I've listened to this <laughs> enough times, I don't need to listen to it anymore. Yeah, um, I have to play it. But having, yeah, I have to play it. But having listened to it, um, you know, so many times and, and, and working out the sequence, which is sometimes kind of the hardest thing. Yeah. Sometimes it's very easy. This was medium easy in terms hmm. of sequencing. But do, in doing so, um, yeah, kind of acknowledging that um, the, the recognition of one's mistakes and, hmm. you know, embracing it, you know, owning up to it. And whether that's a two sides to a story thing or, or acknowledgement of, you know, the, the thing that, that comes up a few times where it's acknowledging that, you know, there's two people to this situation. Yeah. Um, Accepting and difficult truths, I think. And, and, and looking back at it, it's, you know, that had, had to go through that to get to here. Yeah. And um, that is, a, you know, certainly a running theme. I mean, it's, 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 like I said, there's a narrative if you want to find it. The, yeah, it definitely um, seems to be. I mean, to me, it seems like the record is highlighting the truth that as much as we might abstractly kind of just hope for a nice change for, mm -hmm. or to be at the beginning of a new chapter where everything is going to be better. As much as we might hope for that, that's difficult to, to happen, but it's more likely to happen if we kind of radically accept what appears to be unchangeable. Mm -hmm. um, and then like, uh, and then if, if one truly is accepting these difficult truths, then all of a sudden something a change can happen mm -hmm. that would otherwise not be possible right yeah i mean yeah i mean if you'd have yeah i mean you know this acknowledgement of you know if things hadn't changed or you know hadn't gone through these you know tough times mm. uh circumstances are such that you wouldn't have ended up here you know and there's a reason why that happened and yeah you know however you want to believe why or how um you know kind of embracing those battle scars and Mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully learn from it. And sometimes it takes a time or two to learn. But. Be before we get to let our hair down, which is the end of side A, uh, we have to travel through one condition. You can stay on one condition, you could say I'm on a mission. Is the condition of the person staying them saying that you're on a mission? It's vague, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Maybe on purpose. The idea is immediately followed by, should I pray? 
this is, it seems to be like the moment or like encapsulating the kind of moment where this desire to, okay, I, here I am, I'm ready to take the reins to kind of improvise a narrative here. And I'm praying, hoping that, you know, we can collaborate in creating this narrative, mm. but maybe we can't. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, hopefully, if anything, acknowledges that, you know, not just one person's at fault, but yeah, yeah, yeah. that um, it might be better to get out, you know? Mm. It might be better to not, uh, not stay. There's, yeah, the, the, this is another, I like all the sad songs, it seems, hmm. but uh, the... It's usually the most, the, most of them are, but... Yeah, <laughs> the, new, the, the ones that are dealing with like complex interpersonal situations, because it does highlight that there, it's not that there's no affection, but it's clear that there's no connection, and it shows. Mm. So that's really interesting. It's like not, the song would be much less rich if there wasn't this acknowledgement. Well, there is affection, there is something. Obviously, there's emotional investment, but it's not of a kind that's, that's going in a way that would be ideal. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a way to not um, not necessarily have lost all feelings for someone or or something, but knowing that um, it's for the best that you know it doesn't continue the way that's going. Or, yeah, you know. And then after all of those hard realizations, we get to let our hair down. Uh -huh. um, is that seems to be important. Um, the trajectory of side A, it seems almost like there's a kind of purging mm. in that final song on side A. Is, mm. is that the case? Somewhat. I mean, also, I just wanted a dumb rock song. Yeah, to play exactly. With Before the hook, it got too heavy. You know, um, <laughs> but, um, you know, if I could get that to Chris Robinson somehow, he can <laughs> cover it. But, um, yeah, there's definitely a, um, yeah, that's maybe a moment of release. Yeah. And it's a, it's a, Casual rock and roll song, you know. It's um, um, it's not a lot of poetry in that one. Mm, dumb but, casual rock and roll songs could do that. So for right, us, so. yeah. big dumb rock songs are great. Yeah, um, <laughs> they have a necessary function absolutely. within the life, the complexity of which is explored in the other songs. Yeah, and I think there's um, there's something that happens in between. Once you flip the record, mm -hmm. there's something that happens after that song, before. Holding pregnancy. Holding pregnancy, and that's that's your gray area. That's mm. your that's your lost weekend. Mm. So we don't get the thing that enables the the new story. Mm. I, I could probably give you a really dark record that came out of what comes in between those right. two sides. <laughs> the Let's lost it weekend. Way, yeah. It's called the lost weekend. Yeah. And the only song that we haven't talked about yet, so the final song to zoom in on, mm. is "Decade Down," mm. and I find that one. Uh, really interesting insofar as it's the moment that it's capturing mm. is this moment where it does seem that something new and promising could be happening and new seed could be being sown. If I could forsake the rest, I would, because you bring out the best in me. But what about the rest of me? Maybe you're just testing me. Mm. Um, is great. Um, I think in the in the chorus. So here we're recognizing. Okay, I've I've been trying to hold the reins. I on my own. Like I've been, I can manage this much in terms of taking charge of the situation and adapting to the conditions and mm -hmm. um, breaking out of old patterns. Now here there seems to be the promise of a new relationship where someone sees that I'm doing that and cultivates that further. Do I? deserve this? Is, am I right in thinking that that possibility exists? Like, what do I make? There's high stakes here. What do I make mm -hmm. of this moment? Is that the sense of this song? Um, yeah, it is. Um, but again, it's a, I'm sounding like a pretty flawed guy now that we get through this. <laughs> um, it's again, well, we it's again, it's again, again acknowledging you know, the, the capacity for making a mistake or letting yeah. someone down or not being, you know, if, you know when you're in something new, a lot of times, um, you're pr you're projecting your best self. You're bringing your A game. You're whatever mm. cliche you want to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and once that new sheen wears off, you know, it's, you know, there's there are these other parts of me. There's a lot of 
mm. you know, layers to peel away and, mm. uh, you know, he's still going to be here after some of those things are revealed, you know. Right. After you go through some of the tough times. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, but there's, there's underlying hope, you know. I hope it's okay that I, that I brought this bouquet, for example. Gestures, you know. Yeah. Um, what happens when you're not doing that? Yeah, and I hope it still works to do this even as like the sheen, <laughs> well, like... Yeah, it's not just it, a gesture, well, yeah. but, you yeah. know, does that go to stale? Yeah. How, how, do you, and and how, how does you, one make it not go stale? And how do you sustain something yeah. um, for any amount of time once those things maybe aren't a surprise anymore? I think one of the most interesting things about this song is that um, we're, kind of, we're talking about kind of newness, but it's called Decade Down, mm. and the character, if, if I'm reading it correctly, isn't actually new. Mm -hmm. They've reappeared mm. uh, in, in the story. So what is the significance of that? The fact that this isn't, in fact, the beginning of a new story. Mm. It's the beginning of a new volume, mm. perhaps. Well, it just how people sometimes come in and out of your life, you know? Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's a surprise. And... Um, you know, in some cases, uh, maybe the story has not been written yet, mm. not been finished. Mm -hmm. And uh, in all cases, well, sure, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, kind of acknowledging this presence that was maybe unexpected, and mm. and uh, and trying to make sense of it. Yeah. But, Trying you know, to make sense of it, I think. A lot of ghosts. That, yeah, I think all of the songs in their, in their way are valiantly trying to make sense of, of different things. Yeah. You hope, you know, it's, um, it's an odd thing to do, uh, to try to connect like that, but... Yeah. Um, and, you know, for someone that starts solitary and then becomes not... Yeah. So solitary. Um, yeah, it's the the it's... blessing and the curse of the songwriter. Right. <laughs> that we, <laughs> one has that capacity, and then it begins as a private poem, and then one finds oneself Hollering sharing about... it in public yeah. and, and being asked, being quizzed about it. Right, right. So as we're arriving at the end, um, let's go back to the beginning, uh, the cover. How did this end up being the correct title and image? Um, it started as a joke, <laughs> and. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's not like I don't dress like that often during the colder months. Yes. Um, and so we just wanted to find something that was kind of lighthearted, but, uh, yeah. you know. And then the, the true uh, self. Um, We're talking about the search for the true self. Here, yeah, here well, is the true Martin. Yeah. So it's, um, and then it was a watercolor mm. based on, on a picture that a, a former coworker, my wife, uh, made. Nice. And so... Uh, really happy with that and then um, yeah just kind of ran with it the record was maybe going to be called American Junk mm. um, which does somewhat fit with play the, back. the back cover yeah. um, based on a picture I took 15 plus years ago um, of this antique store that, that was the title of the store yeah that's great picture all this you know stuff in the window and um, kind of the sepia toned image and I I can't find it anywhere. I've looked for years since bags of old photos and everything. So I've never been able to find it. The store is long gone. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, it, it, and, and you know, we just, that didn't fit as well. So. Yeah. I prefer this tartan pattern to <laughs> sepia. So. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is much better. <laughs> 